got your roadsters, dimes, and Z's. We've got your safari rally and Mr. K, plus some bad ass cars dominating SCCA. On today's show, it's the legendary. Sorry. On today's show, it's the legendary Japanese brand that stole our hearts, then changed its identity. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on Datsun. Datsun is also kind of the history of Nissan. But while the company itself was called Nissan, some of the cars it made and exported out of Japan were called Datsuns. So for today's episode, I'm only gonna cover its early beginnings and the popular models and people that made it a huge success in the US. Sorry, Aussies, we know you love Datsuns too. What up, Marty and Moog? Let's freaking hang! The company that brought Datsun cars into the world started in Japan over 100 years ago as Kwaishinsha? Kwaishinsha? Sure. Come on. <laughs> Kwaishinsha Motor Car Company. Their first car was built around 1914. This car needed a name, so it was given an acronym made up from the initials of the three dudes who gave the company the most money. D A. Shortly after they started, the company got its first name change operation to go from Kwaishinsha Motor Cars to Dat Motor Cars. I assume because it's a hell of a lot easier to say. For about the next 15 years, they mostly made trucks because people didn't buy many cars back then. But in 1931, they got back to it, and this one was smaller than the original Dot. So they called it the Dot Sun. Just like Nolan is the son of me, and I am the son of nobody knows. But the business of building cars was just as hard back then as it is now. And in 1933, they merged with Jitsuyo Motor Cars. And for some other mundane reasons, it all eventually came to be called Nissan Motor Company. The new company pointed out that Sun, S-O-N, roughly translates to, and I'm not being 100% literal here, Loser in Japanese, while sun, S-U-N, had a brighter and more sunny connotation and could also be considered a reference to Japan's national flag. So they changed the car's names from Dot Sun to Dot Sun, and the 1937 Dot Sun Type 15 became Japan's first mass produced vehicle. And the rest is history. So that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next week. Wow, I mean, his energy was pretty good, but. I don't know, it definitely leaves me want more. I'm just kidding you guys, that's not all. We got a whole bunch more to talk about. Oh God, dude, dude, you're the king, you're the king, man. Over the next two decades, Nissan made airplanes, engines, and a lot more trucks for the Japanese military, and some small passenger cars badged as Datsuns. They sold trucks to the US Army for the Korean War. They even built Austin 7s and Austin A50s under contract. In short, they were becoming successful. So when it came time to expand the business worldwide, the rapidly growing US of A looked like an especially great place to do it. The decision was made to keep calling the cars Datsuns because Americans wouldn't associate that name with that nasty war like they might with Nissan. Plus, if they failed, the Nissan name would escape unscathed. They smort. That's smart. A Datsun Bluebird was shown at the 1958 LA Auto Show and went on sale in California, renamed the 310 later that year. Mitsubishi imported the little cars for Nissan and there were Datsun dealers across the country by the end of the next year. In 1960, Yutaka Karayama, AKA Mr. K, was installed as the vice president of Nissan's North American operations in their new California offices. Mr. K was a bit of a rogue employee and sending him to the US would get him out of the other exec's hair. That decision might have ultimately made the biggest impact on Datsun's success in the US. And you're gonna see why in a minute. Sales went well over the next few years and Nissan started using the world's first specialized car carrier to meet increasing American demand for the new Datsun 410. And Datsuns were establishing themselves as affordable, reliable, small cars. They were also about to establish themselves as badass! Lightning, 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 lightning. thunder, 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 thunder. 
Did you say thunder? Yeah. Do you like it? I love it. Thunder, thunder, lightning, thunder, lightning, thunder. Lightning, lightning. I can feel the power of Asgard flowing through us, brother. That was awesome. Things really got cooking in the late 60s. From 67 to 69. Nice. There were debuts of the Datsun 2000 Roadster, the 510 sedan, and the first of one of the most popular sports car lines of all time. The 240Z. <laughs> Not only were the cars starting to hit with buyers, they proved to be hugely capable. Race winners, too. There was this Southern Californian by the name of Pete Brock, who was hoping to get a couple of those brand new 2000 GTs from Toyota to build out for the SCC competition. But this Texan guy named Carroll Shelby swiped that deal right out from under him and left Brock's BRE race team without a ride for the 68 season. However, <laughs> Brock also saw potential in the Datsun Roadsters and thought maybe he could use them to beat Shelby Americans' fancy new Toyotas that were supposed to be his. After being turned away by Nissan's US corporate office, Brock called up a buddy in Japan who happened to know someone at the Nissan mothership. Well, that someone conveniently turned out to be the president of the whole freaking company. Soon after, two Datsun 2000 Roadsters were flown from Japan to LA just for BRE. They didn't even come over on a boat. They were put on a plane, first class. They didn't even make them check their bags. They brought their dog and didn't, it's not one, it's not a service animal. The dog's just running all over the plane and all the passengers back in coach are like, um, excuse me, this dog keeps biting my child. And the flight attendants are like, shut up! That dog belongs to BRE's Datsun 2000 Roadsters! Happened, happened, look it up, happened, look it up, Google it. <laughs> Ace BRE driver John Morton, the guy who invented salt, started winning races in the 2000 Roadster in short order. Mr. K loved sports cars and racing and immediately saw the value in promoting BRE's success in the US to sell more cars. The team trounced Shelby's Toyotas and dominated SCCA club racing for the next three years. At the same time that all this road racing was going on, Pete Brock also got sucked into the excitement of off-road racing. <laughs> he first built a Datsun pickup for a motorcycle racer, Mary McGee, and crewed for her to learn the ropes. The truck finished and Brock returned the next year to take second place himself in a 510. That's a, that's a little, that's a car. After that, he came back with a whole fleet of factory-supported dimes and a 240Z with big all-terrain tires. Meanwhile, on the East Coast, racer Bob Sharp made a name for himself by winning six SCCA National Championships in Datsun Roadsters and Zs. He built his own Datsun dealerships just to support the team and introduced Cool Hand Luke himself, Paul Newman, to competitive racing. You might know him as the salad dressing guy. I know him as Uncle Paul. Look it up. The new Zs continued Datsun's SCCA winning streak, but 510s saw a lot of track time too. The 510s were so good that their race competitors started disappearing because they were sick of losing. To this day, the red, white, and blue striped BRE race livery is iconic in both Datsun and racing circles. I'm gonna show it to you right now. I mean, I'm sure Colby's been showing you a bunch of it, but I'm sure you recognize it. Nissan was also the first manufacturer to win back-to-back -back East African safari rallies with a Datsun Bluebird 1600 SSS in 1970 and a 240Z in 71. In those days, people noticed who took the overall win in one of the toughest races in the world. Then this Japanese car maker came along and did it twice with different cars. A 240Z even managed third place in the icy 1972 Rally Monte Carlo. As the 70s continued, the Z got bigger and bigger engines. That was partly to compensate for new emissions requirements that sapped Hearst purse. But it never hurts to offer a more power, baby! Even Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak was a big fan, and he starred in a 280ZX commercial. 
Oh, what is it about the Z-Car? It is awesome. That's all we are Why do they always portray him as fat in the movies? You know, he's just like, got a wide head, sure, but he's a normal weighted guy. But they have Seth Rogen and Josh Gad? In just 10 years, Dotson sold 1 million Zs. To put that into perspective, it took GM 25 years to sell that many Corvettes. The Datsun 510 was known as the poor man's BMW and had more style and performance per dollar than other cars in its class. We did a whole episode on them and I'll leave the link in the description below so you can get up to speed <laughs> on the 510. The B210 was another popular Datsun model throughout the 70s. When the oil embargo hit, we gotta talk about it. Blew up the whole industry. Small, super efficient imports went to the top of everyone's list and the B210 was one of the cheapest small cars you could buy at the time. To appeal to young buyers who didn't have much money, Datsun offered a stripped down, low cost model with zero options, side stripes and B decals. Called it Honeybee. They came in white, yellow, and brown, but if you didn't get a yellow one, what are you even doing? Because, I mean, it's called the Bee. If you needed a practical yet pint-sized hauler, the Datsun truck was it. Starting with the 320 and 61 and going all the way through the 1980 720, Datsun pickups were the best-selling light trucks for half that time. SoCal surfers, ha ha, like Matt Powers, especially loved the 620. And best of all, Datsun called them little hustlers. <laughs> but the march of progress comes for everything. And in car terms, that means bigger, is better. By the mid 70s, the 510 gave way to larger models, the 610, the 710, and the 810. Our writer Sarah came home from the hospital as a very fat baby, so fat, look at this picture, in a brown 810. It lived in the garage next to a brown 280Z. Then Sarah grew up and built her own brown 240SX. I guess brown car appreciation runs in the family. By the start of the 1980s, Datsun sales were really ripping and they had loads of brand recognition in the US. But company bigwigs started to feel like it was time to bring all their products under the Nissan umbrella to streamline global production and advertising and to help with worldwide brand recognition. In 1982, they started adding Nissan badges to the Datsun ones on American market cars. Over the next two years, they ran print and TV ads to promote awareness of the new name and dropped the Datsun badges entirely by 1985. We're changing the name of Datsun to Nissan. I hope you're not changing that great performance, Datsun, uh, Nissan. We wouldn't dream of it. All we're changing is our name. In the end, it probably cost the company over 200 million bones. And five years later, most Americans still didn't know what a Nissan was. But ultimately, it did pay off. I mean, I'm wearing the hat. Because I doubt that you'll find anyone in America now who hasn't heard of Nissan. When we started this, we had one video a week. Now we have four, and pretty soon, we're gonna have seven. We're working hard to give you guys more of that content that you apparently like. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any of it. We even launched a secondary YouTube channel just for podcasts. So we're gonna have a lot more of those coming out. We're so, so, so excited about it. All right, I love you. And we got Thunder shirts coming soon. I gotta get over some hurdles, but definitely coming soon.